Hey guys, so here I am back at it. Uh, I'm putting the uh, skins on either side in preparation of going through and doing all the match drilling of all the various number 40 and number 30 holes. There are a lot of them on both sides um, and I did not pull off the bluing on the outside yet. I should have done that before I started this because one of the things you have to do once you get it all set up is go through and mark all of those holes uh, that you will not be touching. There are several holes, especially across the top uh, and at the very end that you're not gonna dimple or drill until a later step. Uh, and there are some that are in the middle randomly interspersed, usually along, uh, right along where the wing is that you're not gonna touch. So um, on the one hand, the bluing makes really convenient for a place to write stuff, but on the other, I kinda wanted to get that bluing off and write right on the metal. That can be cleaned off with a little bit of acetone, but eh, what do you do? Um, you can see in this picture right here that my bending efforts, I think while they were weak in what I was trying to do, like I was trying to get a really good bend, uh, but as some of you pointed out, I really didn't get much past the elast elasticity point of the metal, so my bend was rather crap. Uh, but, you know, okay, it worked. It worked out. Uh, it, it could have been better, but you know uh, the uh, end results are all I care about. And you can see that the the skins uh, with that ro row of clecos up there uh, actually uh, it marries up perfectly. So fine, I'm gonna leave it. Um, some of you had brought out that I should maybe get a pipe or uh, a press break or metal break or whatever that's called. I don't know what that is. Um, like I said, Vans is good enough that most of the metal that they send us is bent already. So I don't have to do a lot of bending. This is one of the few places where you do. Uh, so I don't know if investing in something like that is worthwhile, especially since you the brute force method that you saw me embarrassingly doing in the last video did ultimately do enough to get the job done. Uh, something else I wanted to talk about. So unfortunately, this happened. Um, so this is a plane that's been on our airport for... I mean, years at this point. I've never seen it fly. Uh, I mean, obviously it had to have flown to have gotten here, I assume, uh, but it's been two or three years. It has not flown and we had a really bad windstorm. And unfortunately the tie downs uh, just pulled loose and over it went. Uh, so with that, make sure you get good tie downs. Uh, now in a weird way, this is probably the best thing that could have happened to this plane. Um, I don't think it was flight worthy at all uh, based on what it looks like both now and previously. But anyways, I'm gonna get back to it and I'll uh, see you guys in a bit. So after pulling the skin off um, and removing all that bluing to make it a lot easier to work with, put it back on, started putting Clecos back in and then began the long and arduous and tedious process of match drilling all the holes on the right side of the aircraft, the main fuselage skin. Um, took a really long time. The, the thing that I found the most difficult was drilling some of the holes that were just kind of awkward to get to up underneath the gussets um, that are along the top, uh, along some of the longerons. Uh, and then, of course, going through and making sure that the little line you drew on the outer face of the launcher on actually lined up with the holes uh, and going through and doing that. But um, super happy with how it came out. Everything came out very nice. Uh, I now need to do the other side, which I will do tomorrow um, or well, no, actually, it may be next week now that I think about it. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, so nothing difficult. It's starting to look more like a plane. Um, I am covered in aluminum, so I'm gonna go home and take a shower. Uh, I've had a number of people reach out to me over the last day and a half and ask me uh, what the RV-15 is gonna be. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Vans Aircraft has released a teaser. Uh, and for some reason, you find folks seem to think I have some sort of insider knowledge. Um, well, I'm not gonna say because I don't know, I have no idea. Um, uh, Vans doesn't share anything with me. I, I know nothing more than you do. Uh, part of me wonders if they, they're asking this not because they actually have something in mind or they're trying to drum up support, but because they actually want to know from us what we want. What a great company, right? Um, so I think for each of us, we have to look deep inside and, and figure out what in the Vans lineup that you would like to see. I know some people want you know, turbines, which is to me an antithetical to the Vans 
uh, uh, you know, build it inexpensively. Or our twin, you know, same thing, kind of a, that really doesn't really go with vans. Some people are asking for a high wing, like a bush plane. Okay, uh, they, I don't think, they've never designed anything like that before, but uh, it's not something that would interest me. Uh, personally, I would like to see a total revamp and modernization of the RV3. Uh, bring it all the way forward to today to where you have a larger uh, than what it was uh, for fat people. <laughs> um, you know, single pilot over center gravity style uh, tail wheel RV3. I think that would be, I think that would be awesome with a bigger engine, all that. Sort of like the, the F1 rocket, but you know, a person's own personal fighter aircraft uh, complete with machine guns. So uh, that's what I would like, but I have no idea what the 15 is going to be. Um, Stay tuned, I guess. Anyways, guys, uh, so that's that. I'm going to be out of town for the next couple of weeks. Um, well, week at least. Uh, took some vacation. I needed a vacation. So I'm going to go back to Texas and hang out with some friends and get rip and drunk. Um, and then come back out here and flip over to the other side and keep working on things. Uh, so this is a really short video, so uh, sorry about that. But anyways, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate you. I will see you again here soon, and I plan to do this. Uh, this next one should be longer because I'm hoping... I, I think if I read the plans correctly, there's going to be a lot more skins, a lot more stuff in the next video. So anyways, see you guys next time. Yeah, okay. No. Uh, so I had a lot of footage there and I put it all together and once I got it all together and edited it, it was like six minutes. I'm like, no, nope, oh, it's gotta be longer than that. Unfortunately, a lot of time has passed. So my wife has been sick with the flu. Uh, I didn't get it, but then I flew back to uh, Texas to, to hang out with some friends for a Burns Night supper and on the way back flew in a compact metal tube with a whole bunch of sick people breathing recycled air and I got yuck. I got the turbo yuck. It was not the flu. Interestingly enough, I, I went to the doctor and, and I had them uh, do all the stuff and it turned out I didn't have the flu, but God, I sure felt like it. So it's been a week. Um, so one of the things you have, you're gonna, one of the problems you're gonna have is sometimes after a period of time, you're gonna come back out and you're gonna kind of forget where you were. Uh, and so I had to sit here and like, <laughs> remember what I had done. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember what I had done and where I was and go over the plans and all that. Uh, well, uh, so when I last left you, I was working on this uh, stiffener slash uh, laundron across the top. And specifically down there on the end, I was uh, drilling the holes. You can see these, these three Clecos here, drilling the holes to uh, make all this stuff connect. And I looked a lot and it looks like the way it, in the plans, it kind of wants you to have already had those holes drilled, but there's no way to have had those holes drilled. And then the other issue is the, the laundron goes on top of the piece that has the holes in it. So you have to drill from up underneath or so it seems. And if you guys have done this differently, comment in the comments down below but it seemed like that was odd. Um, I got it done by using this guy. So this is a 90 degree uh, drill that, uh, a, a tool, I don't know what you'd call this, but you know, you, you put your drill here and it, it does 90 degrees and it comes with a, a number of very short little bits. Do not overuse these because replacing these, um, I'm not sure where to replace these, if you can get individual bits or if, if you have to uh, redo or buy the whole kit again, but basically this this piece screws onto here, so it's like it's not a convenient jig. Now I do have a miniature chuck that goes on here that allows you to use any drill bit, but it's kind of bulky, and the whole idea behind this is it kind of lets you get into tight spaces, and so that that chuck adds a, a good amount of uh, girth, you know, to this to this head end, and so it doesn't it's not real convenient. But anyways, so I managed to use this to get this piece drilled down there. And now I need to do the same thing on this end. So that is what I'm going to be doing as well as going through and doing all the drilling on this. And so this piece, uh, and I'll go back and look at it, but I believe this piece of skin is now completely match drilled with everything with the exception of, nope, it's completely match drilled, uh, but this one isn't. So like I've already drilled all the holes across here and 
Uh, I have not done a cross here because you're supposed to stop uh, right here per the plans. So, uh, but everything else is match drilled on this one. So now I need to do this one. And it's a lot of work. Uh, a lot of the same stuff you've already seen. So I'm gonna power through that right quick and then revisit. So um, I don't talk about law enforcement very often on my channel because I know a lot of you guys, you know that's my day job, but you're not really interested in that. That's not why you're here. But I thought I'd share this with you because it was kind of amusing. Um, so this happened. Wait for it. There she goes. <laughs> so I had been out working. So just out of the blue, we, we had this just sudden snowstorm and we had like five inches of snow dumped on us uh in the course of about two hours uh and i worked the whole day pulling people out of ditches and whatnot i had to park my car and go get the big truck to, to help people get out and do all this if it's snowing stay home um and the whole day I was fine. I never had any wreck. I never did anything. And so I, I go home and I park my car. I get out of it. And if you, if you ever see my driveway, there's, it's not even, oh, it's not even like a half a percent uh, grade on my driveway, but there is a slight grade on my driveway. And sure enough, there was enough ice and whatnot that my car just started to slide backwards. I was... <laughs> I was in, in, it had been, it had been sitting there for over an hour. You know, I had gotten off work. I was sitting there for an hour. I was in the kitchen. I'm eating dinner and I just look out of the corner of my eye and I saw my car start to move. And I'm like, huh, there goes my car. And my wife who's sitting right there, she starts to panic. Oh my God, what do we do? And I'm like, go get it when it stops, you know? <laughs> and it rolled through my fence and uh, backed it in kind of, the fence actually pushed it over enough to hit a tree which was perfect because if it had not hit, and, hit, and, hit that tree, hit and, if it had not hit that tree, I mean, it would have Thelma and Louise right off the mountain, man. It would have been awful. Although I guess that may be a good way to get a new car. Mm, my car only has 190,000 miles on it. It's just about broken, I think. So anyways, I thought it was funny. You know, here's a bunch of pictures of it. The damage was actually really minor, um, but yeah. Ice, ice will get you every time. And those Dodges, honestly, those Chargers, oh, they handle horribly on ice and snow. And that particular one is old enough that it's not even all wheel drive. So it was just, it's just a mess. Anyways, all right, back to the plane. I thought that was funny, I wanted to share. Okay, so at this point I have all the skins on both sides completely drilled. I have all the Londrons completely match drilled and everything. Uh, I have a feeling here shortly we're gonna start disassembling everything and then cleaning up the parts. Uh, the one thing it did mention is that you have to make sure that the uh, these Longrons, this one here and the one that goes you know, along here on the other side has to be trimmed to the exact correct length from the final hole. And it makes sense. Um, the the uh, empennage of the plane obviously goes here. And this large rib that goes around it is going to go right here. And there's, you know, this much room that you have to work with. And this, this Laundron unfortunately is half an inch too long in this case. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut it to get it to the right place. Weirdly, the other one is correct, but this one's wrong. So I'm, I'm gonna have to cut it down it's in the plan, so it's supposed to happen. Um, right now, though, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to pull the bluing off these parts and have to impart a, one hell of a twist into these suckers. I don't actually know where these go on the plane yet, but so that's what I'm going to be doing there. Um, super happy with everything came out. There was a couple things that was a little bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, honestly, everything really kind of worked together nicely. Um, so yeah, the next, like I said, the next thing is cutting this, twisting this, and then... Moving on to the next thing. So anyways, guys, I really appreciate you. Thank you so very much. I'm going to try to get more of these videos out. Uh, life is just getting in the way, as it always does. Um, if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor, hit that like button down there. Uh, it really helps my rankings. If you really want to support me, though, you can jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month. You guys can just let me know that you really like this, and I can keep uh, producing these videos. Finally.
If you guys want to build your own airplane, and you absolutely can, if I can do this, you can do this. Time is of no essence, you can take as long as you want. Um, if you use my builder's number, which is down in the comments below, when you order your Vans kit, no matter which kit, it could be the 3, 4, 10, whatever, Vans sends me 100 bucks. It's no, it's no cost out of your pocket. Anyways, this really is the end this time. Thank you all a bunch, and I'll see you next time.